I'm good. I guess they don't use that term in Britain. Uh, are, 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 US, are we good? You are good? You're wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> This is good. Thank you guys are going to follow us in the afternoon. I'll do the turn on some light. You might follow us. Uh, Pseudocinomid animals. So we are done with acinomid animals. These are pseudocinomid animals we are getting into. Um, I, I claim. So let's go. Your textbook talks about it. Um, I have not deleted from my notes, so I might as well talk about it. Um, usually, I ask one of these questions. I usually don't put it in the exam. Sometimes, maybe I do, uh, but one question. Okay. So, but anyhow, animals that shed a tough external coat. So those animals are ectisozoa. Uh, it means molting or ectiasis. That's what uh, the suit. The next phylum we are going to talk about nematoda, they do that. Okay, so they do molting or ectiasis. Eight phyla in this group, but uh, nematoda is the one that we, we are going to talk about it. Uh, there are eight phyla, I hope I'm making some sense. There are eight phyla in clade ectisozoa, but we will talk about only nematoda. Regulation of molting uh, achieved by the hormone uh, ectiosome. So that's the name of the hormone that uh, do egg ducts. The other five pseudocinomid animals, different than ectisozoa, they, they are about four or five phyla in pseudocinomid animals. Yeah, don't worry, don't panic. You don't have to run it. It's just those crazy chemistry people. Uh, what are they call it? It's just those chemistry people. You know, I, you know, when I was in college, uh, Jocelyn, I could handle anything. I, I do calculus. Imagine, can you picture me taking calculus? But chemistry? Oh. Are you serious? That's a lot of fun. It's, you know, it's fun for you guys. But when I took biochemistry, then I had fun. Oh. The regular, normal, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry and all of that. But, and I know people, they did not got the degree in biology because of chemistry. I oh. just said, I'm not going to get a degree. They took a whole bunch of biology classes. I was always with them in Kentucky. But anyway, let's go. Uh, there are four phyla. Uh, the three phyla will be discussed here. There are four or five phyla. Nematoda, uh, Rotifera, they are all pseudocinomate, and Acanthocephala. There are three phyla that we are going to discuss, and they are uh, pseudocinomate animals. Three phyla that are pseudocinomate animals. Okay, uh, nemat uh, nematomorpha is another phyla. I will not lecture on it. I will not talk about it. However, uh, the, the common name is horse hair worm. Uh, Paragordius is the name of the genus. We do have it in the lab. So make sure you know this one also. It is also a pseudocinomate animals, but there is no lecture material on it at all. Okay, so uh, maybe some, uh, anyhow. Cavity like uh, peritoneal sac, uh, they're protostome animals, uh, bilateral symmetry. This will come back and I will talk about it a little bit later on. I will elaborate on this, the very first one. I mean, what do you mean by that? Um, bilateral symmetry animals, well developed organs, uh, polyphyletic, as far as their evolution goes, uh, where do they come from? Um, the theory has that they came from uh, more than one phyla. Uh, I don't. They came more than one phylum, so they are polyphyletic. That's what that term means. They evolutionary wise, where did they come from? Pseudocele derived from uh, blastocele. You're familiar with that term, blastocele. You know where that is, what that is, who that is, where it is. Uh, Syncytial epidermis. You're familiar with that term also. The epidermis has a multinuclei. The cells are kind of connected together. You saw a picture of it before. Uh, no circulatory system or respiratory organs. They do not have that. They do not have a circulatory system. Just like flatworms, when the animal moves, when the animal moves, so the nutrients is spread out throughout the animal. That's how it is. Okay, so they do not have a respiratory system or a circulatory system. Uh, Protonephridia, nematodes do not have protonephridia. They do not have a uh, nephridia excretory system. The nematodes do not have it, uh, which is, we'll talk about that. 
cloaca and eggs contain chitin. So cloaca, I don't know, you guys have seen, been, been in a um, chicken farm. And if you've seen eggs from chicken, there's some poop around it. I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. What it is, where the egg is coming, chicken, I'm talking about chicken. When the egg, where the egg is coming out in chicken, that's where also they poop. Okay, so waste material and reproductive material comes out of same opening, and that is called cloaca. So chicken has cloaca. Uh, in these guys, in nematodes, we are going to see uh, here in a minute. I will talk about it. Cloaca is a structure, same thing, where the waste material comes and reproductive material comes, but females do not have cloaca. Females of nematodes, nematodes are uh, dioecious, okay? Sexes are separate in nematodes, and that's one of the common questions in the lab practice uh, called determine the gender. So if, uh, you will see that the females do not have cloaca. The chicken is a female, right? As you all know, uh, it has cloaca. So, uh, and then of course chitin, I draw chitin for you guys. It's a sugar molecule, right? That has nitrogen attached to it. Here is a sugar molecule. You study that in your chemistry classes. And right here is a nitrogen. This is called a chitin molecule. It's not, it's, it's a sugar molecule that has nitrogen to it. I think that's the best definition. So the eggs of these guys have chitin. You tell at the beginning of semester again, I talked about utility, right? I hope I'm making some sense. Um, and utility is a constant number of cells or nucleus in an animal. What happened with you guys, with us human, we have two utelic uh, structures, uh, our nervous system and our muscles. You were born with a set number of cells, muscle cells, and you were born with a set number of neurons. And you will die, God forbid, someday. You will die with those numbers, unless some kind of disease happens. That concept in biology is called, you tell it, constant number of cells or nucleus. These organisms, nematodes, that I'm going to talk about, we are going to talk about shortly here, the whole organism is eutelic. Okay. However, your, your whole body is not eutelic. When you were a kid, for example, I'm just making up some numbers, you had one, one, million, one million osteocytes. You all know what osteocyte is. Okay. But now, you have five million osteocytes. Right? So the whole organism is not eutelic. Your skin cells, when you were a kid, you had one million epidermis, uh, uh, simple squamous epithelial tissue, you remember, stratified squamous epithelial tissue, you remember that? But now you have five million. However, you were born with one million neuron. I'm, make, I'm making up those numbers. Don't hold me responsible for that. You, have, you were born one, with one million neuron when you were a baby. Now, at the time of death, you will have one million neuron. Normal life, no Alzheimer, nothing else. Same as your muscle cells. Yes, sir. Do they not grow? They grow, but the size of the cell, just like your muscle cells. When you exercise, when you, uh, your neurons grow too, but they grow in length. <coughs> okay, they grow, they grow in size. Yes? This is for all cells of pseudocilomates? Uh, all nematodes. 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 Uh, nematodes. Uh, Rotifera. Uh, um, I don't know about the cancer cell, but they use that one. Okay. Yes. Nematodes and uh, uh, rotifera. Those two phyla. Okay. Uh, complete digestive system. Well, no. What does that mean? Complete digestive system. Anus and mouth. Very good. You have anus and mouth. First group of animals you're seeing that they have anus and true mouth. When you, what you saw at Tenophora, Tenophora had uh, anal pore similar to anus, but it was not a true anus. But these guys have uh, a true anus, okay? Mouth and anus, complete digestive system. Um, flatworms you saw, they had incomplete digestive system. 
And then I'm saying acanthocephala do not have a digestive system at all, just like tapeworms. Food and nutrient is absorbed through the tegument. Okay, so it is just like tapeworms, acanthocephala. And we'll see them, you will see them. We do have them. Phylum nematoda, first group. Uh, I did not, you guys, I'm sorry, I, I should have put it in there. I did not put it in there. I took it out. Um, I don't know why I did that. I guess I was crazy. I, I said there is not enough time. But I want you to know the differences between um, acylomate for this exam. For this exam, it could be an essay question. What is the difference between acylomate, pseudocylomate, and eosylomate animals? Maybe I'll put it at the beginning of the earthworms. I changed my notes a little bit, but anyhow. Uh, so uh, you should know. I hope I'm making some sense. You should know the differences between acylomate, pseudocylomate, and eosylomate animals. So we're talking about uh, pseudocylomate quickly, pseudocylomate animals. They have the gut and they have epidermis, but uh, epidermis around, you will see it in a minute, uh, that uh, between the gut, which came from endodermis, and the muscles, there is nothing, there is no another layer of uh, mesoderm. So you will see it in a minute. That's why we call it pseudocylomate animals. Now it does. Uh, uh, they are, the common name for the phylum, common name of the phylum is roundworm. Common name of the phylum is roundworm. And then uh, about 12,000 species known so far have been discovered, and every day they're discovering new species of roundworm. This is probably the third, uh, the third largest phylum that we've studied, as far as the number of species. Uh, arthropods are, is the number one, as far as different number of species. Then mollusks is the second one, and I would say this is the third one. Nematodes are the third one, as far as different number of species, different number of species. Uh, scientists are guessing there are five, half a more million to be discovered of nematodes. So if you discover one someday, you call it what? Amiria, Amir. Uh, Cyanoraptitis elegans, something about the, this phylum, you guys, this phylum, we are, soon we are going to get into them, and then you will learn different species, and they're all parasitic that, that we have it. But this phylum is not all parasitic. This phylum is both free living and parasitic. Here's an example of a free living. We do not have it in the lab. But you probably were exposed to it when you took uh, high school biology, you did uh, uh, DNA uh, uh, pipe fitting, you all know, gel electrophoresis, that's the word I'm looking for. When you did gel electrophoresis with DNA in high school or Dr. McRae's class, uh, Bio 1, most likely they had a cyanoraptitis DNA in there. Okay, so. Cyanoraptitis elegans is a, um, is a free-living uh, nematode which easily can be grown in the lab. You can grow and get many of them. The numbers do not change, they do not mutate. The number of the, uh, the, the DNA does not change. You remember, they are utelic, the numbers are constant. And this is the most well-studied organisms uh, the first organism that they found the gene map of it was this one, Cyanoraptitis elegans. Okay, easy to handle, easy to grow. Uh, the DNA is being used for uh, experimental purposes as a standard because they know uh, the size and everything else. So uh, that's a very uh, useful tool in biochemistry. I said a lot. Uh, numbers of cells are constant, free living and parasitic in this phylum. Non living uh, cuticle secreted by hypodermis. They have a non living uh, cuticle which is outside and released by hypodermis, which I will talk about all of those. Cuticle is made up of collagen. Remember that collagen from the beginning of semester we had it under our skin, right? Uh, we talked about collagen. You saw it in sponges, collagen. So it's nothing new to you. Uh, they have no cilia flagella, longitudinal muscles only. They do not have circular muscles. They have only longitudinal muscles. And then um, glycogen for muscle contraction. You all know what glycogen is. And they are glucose molecules attached to each other. 
so glycogen for muscle contraction, and then muscle extends to axon. This is very unique in animal kingdom. In animal kingdom, almost every file of your study, something unique you're learning about. Remember, we studied um, flatworms, the uh, class Trematoda 1A became many larvae. You remember that one? That was unique in animal kingdom. This is also unique in animal kingdom. Exam number one, you guys study that what happens, axon, you remember the axon? At the end, you had axon knobs, axon terminals, and they release neurotransmitter. You remember that, exam number one? So what happens, they release to the neurotransmitter. This is skeletal muscle, right? And then when they release neurotransmitter, skeletal muscle contracted. You remember all of that, all of details, little, not, not too details, we didn't study that detail. But anyhow, the muscle contracts, you remember that? So the nerve, neuron, was extending to the muscle cell. These guys, that's the other way around. That's the other way around. What happens, the muscle cells, and you will see a picture of it, muscle cells go into an axon. They extend to an axon. Okay, and then, of course, the neuron extends. That's what the muscle extends to the axon. Opposite of animal kingdom, the rest of animal kingdom. Okay, thrashing movement, what I mean by, did I write down anything about, uh, no, I did not write down anything about thrashing movement. What happens with these guys, uh, they, they do, uh, you know, one type of movement you learned in here, your esophagus, remember? That was in peristalsis, circular muscles contract, longitudinal muscles relax, and then uh, uh, circular muscles relax, longitudinal muscles contract, and that's called peristalsis, and that's how food is being pushed down to your stomach. You remember that from the beginning? That was called peristalsis. And that's what you see in earthworm later on. But these guys, since they do not have circular muscle, they have only longitud longitudinal muscles, so the thrashing movement is they bend and they become straight. That's what thrashing movement is. They bend, they become straight. They bend, they become straight. They bend, they become straight. And when they are bending, they push blood. If they are in our body, they push food, blood, dirt. If they are free living, liquid, whatever it is, they push it and then they become straight. They push whatever it is surrounding them. Am I making some sense, everybody? And then they become straight, and they push, and that's how they propel and they go forward. That's what thrashing movement is. And what causes thrashing movement, two things cause thrashing movement. One of them is um, long longitudinal muscles, and the other one is the uh, hydrostatic pressure. So when I get to the PowerPoints, I hope, if it not, and somebody remind me to go over how that works. What happens quickly, I said orally, and then when it gets to the picture, I hope I'll go over that. What happens when the animal bent, that would be your um, skeletal muscle contract. When the animal becomes straight, that would be hydrostatic pressure. Or maybe the other way. I will, we'll look it up. I can't remember that. Okay, so uh, bending and straightening it up is a combination of uh, hydrostatic pressure and uh, most animals are dioecious. As you all know, we already talked about the term dioecious. Dioecious and these sexes are separate. So in the lab, you should identify which one is male, which one is female. Copulatory bursts or spicules, uh, these are structures for uh, male have them. Copulatory bursts or, or spicules, male have them. You will see it in hookworm. The uh, male hookworm has, they call it copulatory bursa, like this, and they hang on to female. Female does not have any structure called copulatory bursa. They hang on to female, they hold on to female, and then with their penis they transfer sperm from male to female. I hope I'm making some sense. And then spicules it is something that opens up the vagina of the female, and then the penis uh, release sperm into the vagina. Uh, so they are, both of these are structures, some animals have, like hookworm has both of them. Hookworm has both of them. Uh, roundworm has only spicules, does not have copulatory birds. 
you will see some pictures. It will come up. Okay, fertilization is internal, of course. And uh, for juvenile stages, some textbooks they call them J1, J2, J3, J4. In this class, I call them L1, L2, L3, L1, L2, L3, L4. L stands for larva. So I refer to, I grew up when I was growing up, everybody referred to it as L1, L2, L3, L4. So that's what I, I'm gonna refer to myself as L1, L2, L3. Okay, and even those are close to home. I grew up with them, kind of, not inside of my body, I don't know, I have them on them. But when I was uh, um, in uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, that's what I studied, I studied uh, parasites. Then um, L3 is the most of the time in infective stage, so this would be your infective stage J3 or L3. This is the one that is transmitted from uh, one, uh, from environment or from one host to another host, and you will see. So that's the stage that is most likely uh, we ingest by accident or so on and so forth, and we can, most of the time, this is the most of the time. Okay, movement, uh, muscle extent, muscle flashing movement, here we go. Great, I wrote it down there. Flashing movement, is this in your PowerPoint? Did you guys have this down? Yeah. Or no? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, uh, muscle extent to axon, thrashing movement, uh, skeletal muscle makes them uh, thinner and straight. Uh, hydrostatic pressure or cuticle and cuticle make them chirp. Here we go. I wrote it. I said it. In right. So, uh, protostome bilateral symmetry, triproblastic animals. My leg was asking, are these triproblastic animals? Yeah, we left diproblastic animals a long time ago. Uh, Nidarian. Uh, were last uh, 10 or 4 actually. The last. Here we go. Okay, great. So, um, let's, let me go over this and then I'll talk about the picture here in a minute. Um, hang on. Uh, freedom of movement. What, what is advantageous of what, Amir? Advantages of having space. These animals, if you would, okay, right here, I hope everybody, uh, Melissa, can you see this? So, right here, um, so right here, all of that black area, you see, that's space, that's pseudocelum area, okay? All of that black area is pseudocelum area right here, and this is a cross-section of the animal, this is a cross-section was broken to pieces. So what we are saying that these spaces allow the animal freedom of movement, okay? In acelomate, you did not have that. Okay, uh, space for development, animal becomes better, uh, bigger, uh, better circulation, storage for waste material, and then hydrostatic pressure for movement. Okay, so this space, you guys see this, this space, the black space right here, that black space is fluid field. It's not an empty space. It's a fluid field space. And that's what they call it hydrostatic pressure, okay? So it's a pressure that is constantly there and allow the animal, okay. So as you can see, the, the worm elongated like there, here is a worm right here. This is a female, this is a male, okay? Of course it's been broken to pieces, but right here is three lips. Uh, this is the uh, Ascus rumorcoides, model of Ascus rumorcoides, but it has three lips, not all of them have three lips. Okay, but the Ascus, uh, Ascoroides family have three lips. So here, right here, and then this is the esophagus becomes, the yellow becomes intestine, and intestine at the end, you have anus. So mouth here, anus on the bottom. Okay, this is a heavy model, I cannot pick it up. And then you have your ovary right here. Uh, ovary, the reproductive tract in female like, is like a Y. So two ovaries two oviducts, 
and then does not show the ovidoc very well in here, but the red here is ovary, and the, the gray area is uterus. So you have two uterus, and they come, the two uterus come together at vagina. So right here, the small portion, I don't know, you guys cannot see, I'm sorry about that, Melissa, but you're gonna watch the video. Uh, this small portion right here is vagina. This one right here at the beginning opening on the surface of the animal is called genital pore, which you are familiar with that term. This term is called genital pore. But this distance right here, very small, is called uh, vagina. And when you dissect these animals, you can actually see. You can see a vagina, where the two uterus, two uterus come together, okay? And then, of course, the red is ovary, the black is pseudocelum, and that uh, uh, excretory uh, pore, you have excretory canal, and that's pretty much it on, on the female. On the male, then you have the cuticle, you have the hypodermis, and then you have longitudinal muscles. And then, of course, intestine, and the male, uh, the, the, uh, you have the testes, and so on and so forth. The, the male, uh, if you look at it, at the end is curved. This is, of course, ascus rubicodes. The male is curved a little bit toward the posterior end, but female is straight. This is a cross section through, uh, cross section through the esophagus area. This is powerful pharynx, lateral line, lateral line, longitudinal muscle, longitudinal muscle, longitudinal muscle, longitudinal muscle, and right here, this would be your uh, nerve cords. These are your two nerve cords right here, and then these are all longitudinal muscle, and the black area is your uh, pseudocelium area. Cross section through female, um, uterus, longitudinal muscle, nerve cord, intestine, and the red area, uh, the black area is your, I think I went over, uh, the black area is your pseudocelium. Okay, yes ma'am. So does the female have like a hypodermic, like obviously it has longitudinal muscle, but does it have like a hypodermic muscle too, if the model just doesn't show it? Right, they just, yeah, you can see it. <laughs> right here. So right here, this is the cuticle, and hypodermis is the green one. Underneath of the uh, cuticle, which is creamish color, is hypodermis. So yes, you do have it. You know, every structure that male has, female has, except the reproductive tract. And the size of the animal, usually, in this group, uh, the, uh, uh, the female are larger than the male, usually, most species of them. Okay, so uh, animal again, you have the mouth, you have excretory pore, pharynx, I showed it to you, intestine goes all the way and end up in anus, so you have ovary, uterus, uh, cross section of the animal, oh, look, that's what I was talking about. Look at all of these longitudinal muscles, where do they end up to? Nerve cord. Look at all of those longitudinal muscles. Where do they end up to? Nerve cord. Okay. So you have lateral line. These are called lateral line. And excretory duct pass through them. Uterus. Um, in the lab, when you look at the uh, the female, the smallest circles. The smallest circle is ovary. Then a little bit larger is oviduct and the largest one is uterus full of eggs. So you see those dots, those dots are uterus. And of course you see the intestine in there. So female reproductive tract is something like this, if I have to draw it. A male reproductive tract is straight, but female reproductive tract is, let me draw it so you guys, I asked this in the exam quiz. So female, uh, uh, these are ovary, this would be, of course, very long. This is oviduct. And then this would be uterus, which uterus at the end come together like this, and this becomes vagina. Vagina, uterus, ovi, oviduct. And then ovary. Does it make sense? Ovary, very small, thin, very small, thin. Uh, oviduct, a little bit larger, 
and of course in the uterus you have full of developed, fully developed canes, right here. Okay, I hope I'm making sense. And of course on the cross section you will not see vagina. You see uh, uh, uterus, and that's why. Okay, here it is. The, the diagram is showing you that all of these muscles are ending into the neck. Is there any question? Question? No. Okay. Okay. So I gave you enough of introduction to the phylum. Let's talk about the first group of uh, animals. Ascus and Ascus soon. Ascus soon, guys. Um, it is in the United States. Of course, both of these are found in the United States. Uh, Ascestrum echoides, people have it. A lot of people on planet Earth have it. They don't even know it. Uh, Ascestrum, on the other hand, uh, we get it from pigs. It is common in pigs. This one, Ascestrum echoides, also found in pigs. But sometimes Ascestrum, when we ingest the larva, the L3, the larva ends up in the brain and cause um, uh, I do not have specific terms for it. They can go the larva of the L3 of Aspersum, it can cause uh, brain damage. Put it this way. I know I spoiled you in the past. Any organism went to the brain, I had a term for it. But uh, Aspersum is dangerous. So uh, a lot of farmers, pig farmers, um, they have that in the farm. Uh, so they have to be careful uh, as far as hygiene and they take care of it. A little bit. Swine is pig and human have both of these worms. Eggs can remain in the environment for a long, long, long time. How long, Amir? When they open up mummies, they open up their gut and they were they found, of course, the egg, the, the, the worm was gone, but the eggs of this parasite were found in the bellies of mummies from 2000 years ago. Alive. So the eggs. No, the eggs. The eggs are in the uterus, you remember that? Okay, so the eggs, I doubt that they were viable, but I'm saying how viable it means they could infect somebody or something, uh, but, um, so the eggs can remain in the environment for a long time. The eggs can stay in the dirt, for example, and for a long, long period of time. So be careful when you go gardening, and so on and so forth, so you have to be careful with this uh, parasite. Um, the worm is about 15, Ascus rumorcoides, about 15 to 40 centimeter long. So there, we have them in the lab. If you want to dissect them, you're more than welcome to dissect them. Okay. Uh, and then mouse has three lips. I have some transmission uh, scan electron picture of them. Um, so I don't know where I left them now. I, if I look hard, I can find it. So, and you, know, and you will see some pictures of three lips. We have it on the model. Anus is on the ventral side of the animal. Uh, male have spicules. Uh, the function of spicules is to open up the vagina and then the penis will uh, release sperm into the vagina. That's what the function of spicules. Not all species have spicules. Not all nematodes have spicules. Okay, um, but then you the dioecious, of course, and then uh, female has a Y shape. I didn't draw it for you on the board. Y shape reproductive tract. Male uh, is straight. Thin ovary, larger oviduct, and even larger uterus. And the life cycle is direct. You all know what that means. Direct life cycle. Right? You all know what direct life cycle means. It means contaminated feces, eggs, into the food. We ingested our hand, or fomite, whatever it is, we ingested, we have the one. I hope I'm making some sense. There is no intermediate host involved in this parasite. As I said, a lot of people on planet Earth have, have they don't even know. Fertilization after copulation, of course. Um, what do I want to say here? Same thing, you guys. Uh, oh, this is the male. If you would, it's curved. That's what I was trying to show you guys. The male is curved, and uh, this is the male. So dead giveaway, this is the male. 
right? And then uh, I showed you this uh, dorsal nerve cord. Do not worry about dorsal and ventral, cuticle, hypodermis, right here, uh, nerve cord, uh, longitudinal muscle, I'm beating the dead horse. Oh, this is a, a male, great. This is a male. The one you saw before, uh, it was uh, female. So this is a male. And then a cross section of a male nematode uh, posterior in the end. Here's the life cycle of it. You must have both male and female. So what happens, let's go over this life cycle because I would like you to know them a little bit. <clears throat> the eggs are lobed. Look at the eggs. That's a dead giveaway. This is Lumicus or um, Ascosum. Ascosum and Lumicus uh, terrestris. Uh, they are, um, they are, the egg is, uh, is lobed. So what happens when human defecate on a piece of the land, what, and, and the egg stays in the environment, a fertilized egg, and undergo uh, two cells, become more eula, and inside of the egg, it is what? Inside of the egg is what? Elephant. Where? Where? In the environment. And a human comes and pick up that egg, <coughs> contaminated food, vegetation, water, you name it. And then it goes inside our body and molt becomes L4, and after L4 becomes what? Adult. adult. I forgot to write on adult. They molt, you remember that? So when you have right here, when you have L1, L1 becomes L2, L2 becomes L3 in the environment. They molt in the environment inside of the egg. That's not true for all nematodes. Nematodes leave their eggs when they're in the environment, but this is a special one that remains inside of the egg. I hope I'm making some sense to you guys. So right here, the L3 is 